Hello, this is John Spielman with a video version of my latest chess base column, number 166. I'm just going to check first and you'll get a slightly funny picture that I am recording because otherwise there is no point doing this whatsoever. And yes, I am. Good. Right. Um, so, I've called this a tale of two universities and two engines. And originally, actually, I was intended to carry on with defence, like a fortnight ago. But then I started thinking about what had happened last weekend at the varsity match. The varsity match between Oxford and Cambridge Universities, which nowadays takes place at the Royal Automobile Club's clubhouse. It's sort of their... Uh, it's a venue in London's Pall Mall, where all the big London clubs are, or many of them. And that's where they hold the, the match. Um, it's the oldest chess um, event in the world. It started, it's now up to 140. Uh, it started in 1873. There's actually some discussion about which the first matches were, because some were there, there were some matches by correspondence and things. But anyway, this was the 140th official one, and um, it's a great contest. It used to be reported on in the pages of 64, the famous Russian magazine, um, chess magazine. So, um, I played in 1975-7, to seven, and that time Cambridge won almost every year for about a decade. I think there was one year they didn't, that Oxford won. But certainly they won the three times that I played, and personally I lost to Michael Steen the first time, and drew with Jonathan Mestel the other two, and we lost all those matches. Um, you can find out more about the history of the um, Oxford University uh, of the Varsity match if you want by going to Brit Base, which is John Saunders's um, game ar archive. Let me just where's my mouse gone? Here it is. Um, here we are. This is the you can I think you can see that. Brit base, and apart from anything else, it does have the Varsity match as well. This is a whole um, archive of different tournaments played in the United Kingdom. And here's the Varsity match, and if we look at the latest one, you can see that now the score is 60 to 58 to Cambridge with 22 draws, and if we look at 2022, and look at the, the, the match. It was four and a half to three and a half to Oxford after an end game save on the bottom board, in fact. I think it was the bottom board, wasn't it? Yes. That Oxford just managed to survive that. Um, and what, what, I, um, what I do, I'm both... Um, there's a dinner afterwards I usually go to, and there's also, always, also commentary nowadays. And this time the commentary was given by Matthew Sadler. So I was the Sioux commentator. I was just sitting there chatting to Matthew about the games. And other people were sitting there either twiddling their thumbs or an oar or whatever they felt in a little commentary room. And at some point I mentioned that um, I use Houdini. Or I had been using Houdini as my default chess engine in chess base. You know that in chess base you can set a default chess engine which you then call up and I think Alt F2 I think is what you is it Alt F2 or Alt F3 which starts um, your default chess engine uh, we'll see in a minute this is my chess base window and he said oh well the latest version of Stockfish is so much stronger than that and so I thought oh I'll switch default engines but when I did so I, I had a culture shock because Houdini poddles around, I don't know if it's 2800, 2900, who knows. Houdini's supposed to be 3300. And its assessments are usually plus or minus 0.25 or 0.5 or something, quite often equals. And this sort of accords with my view of chess that unless you do something really stupid, it's all right. And the way I play chess nowadays is to... Um, try to play decent moves. Of course, if the position's critical, I will sit down and try to find the best move, if I think I have to. But a lot of the time, I just play a decent move, because I'm reasonably happy with it. And 
This accorded with Houdini's world view, but Stockfish, which goes beep and goes to minus 2.5 in a position where I thought it was, thought it was a bit worse or minus 6 or something, it's a bit of a culture shock and I'm trying to decide what to do about it. And I thought one thing I might do is to annotate games with both engines, not at, on at the same time because it's probably going to confuse the processes. But, and I did do this for the two games. What I did was, in the end, I annotated the uh, best game. I, I, um, I choose, normally I, often I do this with Ray Keane, but this time it was with Matthew. And we chose the best game, which was Board 1, where Tim O'Gorman for Oxford beat Matthew Wadsworth. And Board 3, where Victor Vasiliu and Kobe Kalavanan had a draw, quite an exciting draw. Right, so what we're going to do... Um, is we're going to look at these games and they're in chess space and I've got both of them so I don't know if I'm going to turn the engine off and I'll just show you what happened so um, this is board one which is some sort of slight anti-slav system Bishop b7 looks a bit odd. I think the engines preferred bishop d6. I thought maybe knight bd7. Anyway, that was played. And now we all know what Shakarim and Mediarov would play. It just sort of screams out actually nowadays. People didn't used to do that, but now they do. And so he played g4, this guy, Timmer, Tom Gorman. And it's a good move. If you take the pawn, um, rook g1. Knight f6, rook g7. What's the score? Well, um, Stockfish says plus 1.81 and Houdini 0. 0.7. That's the sort of difference you get. h6 he actually played to stop the pawn's advance and rook g1. And now g5 was played, which is, I don't know, blocks. But when you make a blockade, you only blockade basically if it works. Here Stockfish wants to play c5 actually, uh, and it sort of burbled on about, well it doesn't burble, it thunders. I said it's like looking at the, the face of God when you've been talking to a saint uh, in sort of broad terms. Obviously I've done neither. Um, and um, here it wanted, he liked this Stockfish. I'm not sure. I think he went down a little bit after a while. I think this probably is quite good for white. Because if you can keep control, eventually you can play h4 and break up the king side. Anyway, this did not happen. It went g5, h4 takes knight e5. Rook g8, f4. I haven't an annotated every move. Bishop b7 castles queenside. Stockfish says plus 1.7. And I actually forgot to ask Houdini, so I'm going to add a kibitzer, because it's because where I put assessments, um, then I want to have them from both of the bods. So we'll look for. We'll give it about 20 seconds. I'm not. So some. So we'll call it. Shall we call it 0.6? Um, we'll say eight. Plus, is that an H? That's a K actually. That's not very good, is it? Plus 0.7. Which again is the difference. You know, I think this is better for white, but it's a fight. Stockfish already is sort of thinking, oh, this is a disaster. I'm going to turn Houdini off now, actually, as well. Because I don't want to have it interfering too much. Okay, Bishop, Bishop takes E5. It's not a great move. This does very bad things to the dark squares and the stockfish goes up to 2.5 after the recapture and I suppose again we should again look we'll make we'll correct things and we will actually turn Houdini on again this is going to get tedious when I do this much isn't it but I'm going to just do this and after f takes e5 and plus 1.1 or something, plus 1. And Houdini plus 
two actually. You can say. Okay, so that was a mistake. I'm going to turn it off again. I think I'm not going to turn these engines on again unless I have something I need to do. Um, and g5 was a clever move. The reason he played that is because of queen h7, there's queen g5. Um, queen h7. Queen g5 is a move, possibly. Which is basically try, trying to go back. So that's why he did that. And h takes queen h7, rook f8. Now he took. I was, I was, um, you know, we were commentating episodically on different things. And here Matthew and I started talking about this game. And he really wanted to play bishop a3 at once. And we thought c5 takes. If queen a5, you just go. Sorry, this has happened. Bishop a3. If queen a5. You just go bishop d6. You don't take the rook. And this is terrifying for, for black. Because you're going to just splat your way through with that enormous bishop. And um, then also there is there is c5 takes, which I've not actually analysed with an engine more. Basically, we thought this must work, and I think it does. You can go b4, but then you take an e6. And it's a massive attack. You know, black can't recapture because of bishop h5 check, and it, it should be mate. I mean, we just sort of believe that things like this are going to work. Though, of course, in a game you'd want to prove it. I mean, it's not that it's so simple or anything. Now, um, in fact, he took and then did this, and the point is he has stopped c5, but this is a bit more fun. I don't know if bishop d6 is so good now because e5 is dropping. He took. And they got to this position, king d1, takes, 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 takes. My initial feeling was black could fight in this position, and actually he can. But I think when we were commentating, we sort of convinced ourselves that things were happening too quickly on the king side, and it was going to be very bad. Here, black made a mistake. He played d4. He should have gone knight e7, bishop h5, d4. And this is not such a clear position, actually, because eventually you have... You're getting some pieces out and you've got this big past h pawn and you can at least fight it's not so it's not so clear now uh also you know you're just you're controlling a lot of squares but what happened was d4 was a mistake quite a natural move but after knight e4 the knight comes in and this is a disaster now for black c1 can go d4 Round about here, it should have been fairly easily winning, probably. But, um, well, things happened. I don't know if you could have taken the bishop at some point before. d5 is an interesting move. I don't know if it's a terribly good move, but it's a very human move, trying to force things. Um, and d6 takes, takes here. Getting off the back rank. Not sure how these are. Round about here, he went check and knight d8. And actually, this is not a great idea. Should go knight c5 check again. Because here, if you take... b4 is a mistake. If you take and play b4, then actually the engine assessments... And I do trust them in an ending. I think, you know, they can do that easily. They can at least... Uh, are that this is defensible or it's half a pawn or something. So I guess you should be able to draw as black. But in fact, he went b4... Then he was able to keep the bishop and then there was a certain amount of faffing around um, and then he managed to swap the bishops this this position would be interesting if black had time to play king b6 and knight a5 then it would be a little bit difficult because white would have to reckon with as he advanced the king with b3 in fact table bases and of course once you have fewer, seven or fewer pieces in the board, you can unleash your table base. This is just six. Tell us that after, if black could play king b6 and knight a5, it would still be winning. But it would have been not easy. As it is, he doesn't have time. And now, of course, there's nothing really to be done because um, the king is getting in. 
and you just drive him backwards and take a pawn and he, he to played rook takes knight here because now if the rook takes knight king takes king c6 uh, and followed by the queen and the pawn so this was a game with plenty of mistakes but it was also a very interesting game any decent game of chess will have mistakes especially when talked about by an engine and one thing i also talked about in the column was about how i don't like how machines go beep and give two question marks especially if you annotate a game you play a game on a website and you annotate it with the engine it goes beep beep that's two question marks a two question mark move in a blitz game is something loses a piece or loses a rook or maybe if it's two really strong players something that completely wrecks your position in one glorious jump but uh it's not something that makes the assessment change but actually doesn't matter and so I'm unimpressed by um, by that you have to be very careful with engines you have to be the be they have to be your tool rather than your master so that was one game I'm just going to and the other game is what we, what we gave the shared brilliancy prize which, which had a lot of lot of cleverness in uh, this was board three to start with, uh, white gets the advantage. He went f6, I don't know. I imagine you can go e5 actually if you want to, but maybe he didn't like knight h4. e5 is an interesting move. Got very messy this position. Queen b8 actually given is better, so that if knight d2 you can take an e5. Uh, b6 apparently is not that good. Which isn't obvious at all. Okay, they played some moves, and for a while, this position was. Um, by the way, I suppose I should say that c4 question mark. Just notice now. Take, take here. Well, it's worth mentioning that. And that is two question marks. Uh, I'll have at least one more question mark. So um, we'll. They played some moves, and it got very complicated. Castles. Which takes f three. If knight e five, rook e one. There's a horrible variation. Take take here. Check. And white has taken all the black's pieces and some, some for the next game as well complete disaster take take bishop rook d8 he took so so we looked at this Matthew and I and thought can black play knight e5 here obviously white's going to sacrifice his queen and how is it and it's an interesting position this is a position that you an engine is going to be very good at actually you probably ought to do uh, I think that we want to actually promote rook a d1 here sorry the promote variation if rook we thought maybe rook fd1 or matthew did to try to play a3 but actually this is the most interesting thing and the very interesting thing here is the engine goes beep and says you must play g5 so my question is why when an engine tells me something and i don't understand why then i try i look at the variations and try to and the thing is that if it's g6 f6 check here takes takes check you haven't got the g6 square and this is actually at least equal maybe king f8 bishop d6 is a draw but here white is really is really cooking whereas after g5 x lamb the same variation this is winning for black or should be winning for black it's not not, not that easy but I mean it should be so that's quite a big that's a typical thing that an engine will tell you and what you need to do if it says something really strongly and you don't understand it you play through the variation until you do because it'll have a reason I mean in terms of calculation it's much stronger than you are and anybody else on the planet any other human on the planet it may not have any positional understanding or not that much but they probably do now 
But And so this was a very interesting variation. In fact, he played knight f6, so he believed him that knight e5 would be a good queen sacrifice, which is a pretty, not an unreasonable bet. We couldn't tell, Matthew and I. He just We couldn't see a way to put black away, so we were a bit surprised and thought, well, maybe maybe it doesn't work. You know, you don't know. You just have to have to look and see what you think. And here, white got the advantage. And knight e5 would have been a good move. There's a nice variation that goes here, here, pawn takes bishop, and now white has a strong move. Can you see white's strong move? Uh, ping! Ping, ping. Very pretty. So, uh, what actually happened was that knight h4 was played queen d3, rook g8, and this is completely different. Um, actually, knight, knight h6 check would have worked here. Ping goes the engine. I had to look and think, why does this work? And then after a moment I realised, of course, the point is not that you're attacking, but that the black queen is on pre. So after takes, check. Um, obviously after take the rook, you're going to be mated up a tree. Check, and queen takes queen. I thought, is this completely clear? Uh, you know, black's got bishop and knight, rook and knight for a queen. I mean... Stockfish says 4.7 and Houdini 2.3. So yeah, it's clear, I suppose. This is what happened, in fact. Um, and here he should have gone, apparently, rook d8 check. This is a mistake. And here, actually, black is winning if he does the right thing. Um... So if you go queen h1 or something, bishop d4 check is going to win. If you go queen to here, or to g2, bishop d4, rook takes bishop, queen takes queen. Takes queen, pawn takes, and black should win. Not completely trivial. You played b3 and you try to fight, but I mean, not great, is it? It should be a minus plus. Okay. Now check here check here check here and here i was watching and here i did manage, manage to calculate actually because sometimes you can calculate and sometimes you can't but here it's not very difficult at all um he should have played now is there no it doesn't matter so um you should play bishop d4 check here he played knight e3, and after that, after queen d8, check the game continues. After bishop d4, rook takes, check. It's all check, so it's easy. King to there, obviously, if king f1, rook f8, check. Check here, check here, check. Up, check. It's all checks, so it's easy. King takes knight, check. King goes somewhere, doesn't matter. Queen takes rook. And that is the end of the game. I mean, you could arrange to go backwards with the king and maybe have one or two checks with the queen, but obviously you can't give perpetual with a queen and a rook and the king in the h-file. And that would have been the end of the game. As it was, he didn't do that. I mean, you know, these, these are difficult decisions in quite short of time. He was quite short of time at this point. Queen d8 check is an excellent move. It's the only move to fight. And the game continued. This should be winning, but it's difficult now. Um, this is already difficult actually here black apparently ought to go king e7 which is very far from obvious and the reason for that I mean again the engine said king e7 so I thought oh that must be something to do with tempo moves and you go king to there king to there, check here, here and this is more or less Sugsbang because uh, well, it's not very obvious, is it? But n n now you're now you're in time to get your pieces, and you coordinate. You should be able to win. That's not not easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can't actually ask a table base. But we can ask an engine, but that's already very difficult. Um, and I mean, maybe on a very good day with a following win, given some time, I could find that move because. 
I do look for Zug's values all the time in endings, but I wouldn't expect necessarily to necessarily to realise this was a Zug's value. I suppose when you look at it, if he moves the rook away from the A file, you can go knight D1, and you're going to be threatened to take the the A pawn, and if and otherwise the king has got to go away somewhere, and if the rook goes over, you can go king B7, and then again you're going to be going towards the A pawn. So it's not impossible to to find that this is Zug's value. But it's not easy. What actually happened was that they did this. And now this position I think is already drawn actually. I'm not sure is this still drawn. What happened was let's have let's ask an engine because it'll it'll give us an assessment. I am gonna I'm going alt F two and asking my Maestro Stockfish looking into the face of the Lord and it's saying it's a draw. And it can calculate far enough to know at this point. So, thank you, O oh Great One. Oh, I talked about how when I'm streaming occasionally, when I do stream, which is not that often now, a tournament, um, I may well do some of the Meltwater stuff, I suppose, or some of the Grand Prix, um, that I try not to use engines too much, but occasionally I call, I talk to my Lord Sese, which is stockfish on ridiculously strong hardware. So, so may... <coughs> Is one of the strongest entities in existence, chess playing entities in existence. This one, you go check, you keep on checking until he goes um, east, and then you take on c5. And this is just a draw, because you're going to go back and attack the knight. And they drew. So a, a hard fight. So this was a tale of two universities, Oxford and Cambridge University, who have bashed each other now. It's getting very close again, only two wins apart, and of these two engines. And the, 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 meta, the story about the engines is that you have to think what you want from your tool, because although it may be much more accurate, is it something that you're comfortable with? Do you want to have an approximation that you can feel that's what a human being would feel, or do you want to know something closer to the truth? I'm just going to go and check again we're broadcasting, and if, if we're not, I'm going to scream, which will be a pleasure for you all, and we are, and now I'm going to stop. So I hope you've enjoyed this, and I will be back in a fortnight, because a fortnight will be the beginning of... April, won't it? It'll be April the 2nd, in fact. No, April the 3rd. Sorry. I'm, I'm doing this on Saturday the 19th, but the 20th is when it goes out, and the next column will be on April the 3rd. Please write in if you have any glorious ideas. It's always... I always wrap my brains a little bit, and then something pops out when I think about it a bit. But, but if people help, um, that'd be great. Okay, cheers then. I'm stopping now. <laughs>